Wow, big downloads, huge downloads. I'm asking Spirit for the strength and the ability to articulate this message clearly with you because the energy is so transformative, so powerful, and it is my intention that it reaches those of you who need to hear it most. So I'm getting the message that your words have teeth and talons that can pry open any door along the way. There's definitely something about crow energy, crone energy as well. And I've been feeling this mother main and crone feeling for some time, like working with that concept. And I've worn my beautiful, beautiful necklace that Lindsay, one of you guys, sent to me. It's just absolutely beautiful, phenomenal beadwork. I'll put a link to her Instagram in the description box below if you want to check out more of her work. Um, hi, Lindsay. Uh, I, she actually gave this to me a couple years ago, and I've been wanting to do a reading, Mother Maiden Crone reading, but the time hasn't felt right. This is not necessarily a Mother Maiden Crone reading, but trust me when I say the energy is here, okay? The Mother Maiden Crone. I also received a comment which confirmed that I needed to do this reading, um, and somebody said, doesn't crone mean ugly old woman? Which made me laugh because I suppose if you Google it, I mean, I haven't, but if you were to look up the, the word on Wikipedia or something like that, maybe that would come up that the crone is ugly and old <laughs> and she would be to the matrix world, I suppose. But the crone is so beautiful. She's the epitome of beauty, actually, because she's already gone through the phases of maiden and mother. She's the culmination of divine feminine energy. She is magic. She is power. She is wisdom. She is transformative. And she is the guardian of the threshold. And I pulled out an oracle card. I pulled out a few to see what's going on here with the energy before I start the reading. And I got night crone of doorways. This is a beautiful, can you hear the crow? <laughs> yeah, I, this is a beautiful, beautiful deck. It's called the Weaver's Oracle. So spirit is definitely confirming and with the rest of the cards too, that I'll show you and then we'll pull tarot and all that. Definitely confirming the presence of mother maiden crone energy, but particularly crone energy. So it's okay if you do not resonate with crone energy, that's fine. But I will tell you that uh, if you have a lunar cycle, a monthly cycle, then you do cycle through mud and, mud, <laughs> maiden mother crone energy every month, okay? Where the bloodshed is the crone energy, okay? It's, it's the symbolic death. And then the maiden comes in with the rebirth and then the mother is the fertilization or the ovulation. So, you know, this is a very important thing for us humans uh, to honor within ourselves, regardless of your gender, uh, honor within the collective, if that's not one of your experiences here in this 3D material life that you're in this cycle. I'll let the train go by there. So yes, we are at the fire. We are working with fire energy as well. There's something important about being close to the elements for this reading um, that spirit wanted me to tap into. So your words have teeth and talons. They can pry open any door along your way. I felt like this was a little bit of a warning, okay? It is definitely, that message is definitely underlying your power, underlining, underlying, interesting, underlying your power, but also underlining your power. But the message is also saying that there are doors you could pry open that not you don't necessarily need to go through. And it's something about your words that open these doors, how you speak, what you say. So be very careful of what you say and how you convey your downloads, your messages, or just your thoughts and your emotions. I've said it many times on this channel and many other people say this as well. The wise ones, they say, I say that words are magic. 
They have a vibration, they have a resonance, they transmute thoughts into form, into something that we can hear and interact with. It's a way for us to communicate energetically with one another. So words are very powerful and they will open doors, both good and potentially bad, depending on how you're wielding your words. So I got some more downloads. I wrote them down here and I made a spread out of the downloads that I received. So the other downloads, um, definitely encountering the guardian of a threshold. And I believe this is the crone is the guardian, but I, we will ask more about this information about who is the guardian. Then we have a message about chaos. And this came through before I even pulled the card. And what the book talks about, Kim Cran's alchemy deck, when it comes to this card chaos, is that the void is felt as an absence, whereas chaos is felt as an overwhelming presence. So there's something about this, these doorways, these words, this feeling, even the feeling I'm feeling, where it's like an immediate presence of energy. You could feel like there's just something you need to do, or there's just something going on that you can't quite put your finger on because it's chaos after all. It's in the energy of chaos, meaning that it is unformed, okay? It's, uh, chaos is the material we need for creativity and creation. And it can be scary, it can be frightening, but it can also be a magical time to pause and evaluate what it is that you want to do next or how you want to deal with a particular situation. Do you want to walk through a certain portal, a certain door? Now, there's also something about this energy that I'm tapped into today, which, wow, it's just, it's so big, guys. <laughs> it's just so transformative you've come to a point like you if this is resonating with you if you're still here you're at a point here where life is changing right now for you inside of you around you there are big things about to happen or they're already happening perhaps they're not very perceptible imperceptible changes but energetically felt there's something about this energy that relates to the 1111 portal, which is November 11th, and also the new moon in Scorpio. This has Scorpio vibes all over it. Okay, so the new moon in Scorpio is the beautiful phoenix rising from the ashes. The full moon in Scorpio, to me at least, is the death aspect. It's when things come to an end, the, the crone energy, the closure. The phoenix is the rebirth, the rising from the ashes, coming back into that maiden energy of creativity, working with that chaos to form something beautiful for yourself. Yes, and we have also the phoenix, a death is transformation. Guys, these cards are such big sinks. The other card that I received is Lunar Eclipse, Spiritual Changes and Internal Evolution. So we just had a lunar eclipse. So this could be, it could have kick-started this energy around that time. There could also be something about moths. The energy of a moth for you could be significant. But I am absolutely feeling like things are happening in the energetic field. Also in the 3D material world, changes that you'll see happening, very subtle changes, and then also drastic changes. changes. But it's almost like you wake up or you just step into a new timeline and just things just, you feel it. Like something has shifted in your universe, in the universe, in our universe. Something has changed. Big. Okay? And this is a reflection of your internal evolution. Now, this change is all exciting and everything, but that warning is severe and important okay yeah i have also with the downloads there's a harbinger of change uh crows crystals braids i got sweet grass tobacco spiritual tobacco 
a deep dark blue color and the number 611. So make of that what you will. We also have the message coming through that there is a shadow or there are shadows that are sire in there that have the potential to block your luminosity or that are blocking your luminosity. There's something about, I feel like there's people on different parts of that timeline there. One second. The question really spirit wants us to ask is what are the shadows that are blocking our luminosity? And then the last message I got was about the three fates and something is hanging by a thread. And I, when I heard that message, something is hanging by a thread, I saw a crow or a raven. I'm not sure. This one seemed more like a raven to me with a red thread, okay, in its mouth. And I feel like spirit wants you to be very conscious of what it is you're weaving, how it is that you're weaving this, and to remember the universal law of cause and effect. So everything has an effect. Okay, whatever it is that we're putting out in the world, our energy, our words, especially with this message, our thoughts, our emotions, or just, you know, what, whatever it is that we're emanating and expressing will have an effect. And that is something that we cannot change. And there are effects that are still being rolled out, played out today from past causes that we cannot change, okay? So perhaps there's karma con karmic contracts yet to be fulfilled, yet to be closed out, and that will be happening really soon, okay? And for some of you, not all of you, for some of you, this might feel a little difficult. You might be faced with some challenging effects from some of your actions or some of someone else's actions, whatever it is. But remember, challenges come with potential for change. Okay, so let's get into the message and see what the cards have to say. <laughs> All right. So we have, we're going to look at what is the threshold? Who is the guardian? I, it is the crone energy, but we want to see if we can get more specific. Uh, what do you need to know about your teeth and talons, your words? Uh, what do you need to know about the chaos that's around you? Uh, more info on the harbinger of change. What blocks your luminosity and what is the outcome of all this? So I have no idea where we're heading, but let's go forward and find out. There's a certain level of self-trust that spirit also wants you to have at this time. This might be really loud. I apologize. I'm working on a table that is quite hard. Hmm. Something about the magician's table I'm seeing or like a hard surface here for you to work on. Okay, let's see. We're going to get three oracle cards. We have one flipped over here. <laughs> Daemon or the diamond or demon, depends on how you want to say it, but I go with Daemon. This is the creative Daemon. So this is an archetype about your creativity that comes from an energy of chaos that releases you from the matrix and for, from what binds you. The creative diamond. Collective, there's freedom ahead. Big, big freedom on your path. And it comes through something you're creating, unshackling you. Now, I also feel like you have the potential to help free others with your words, open doorways, 
open doorways, open doors, walk through doorways, but maybe it's to reveal a doorway to others as well. Which doorway do you want to reveal and to whom? Do you want to reveal the doorway of life or death, I'm hearing, light or dark? Do you even know what doorway you're revealing to yourself and to others? I feel like this message is for, for a very particular group of people. Okay, so if you feel like this isn't working for you, that's okay. It's just not your message. So this is the threshold, the creative diamond. The creative diamond is inspiration as well. Okay, let's get all the cards out. Ooh, interesting. Okay, we need a couple more. Okay, let me just move this paper over. There's also something, well, this makes sense because this message is a lot about words. There's also something about your throat chakra. Keeping it lubricated is important. Okay, so interesting. A drop of water just fell on this card I have here that came with um, one of the decks I'm using. It just shows a spread. I was going to use it, but I decided I wanted to create a custom spread out of the downloads. But this spread is about attachments, releasing attachments. And a drop of water just fell on that, right? Which goes back to this card, right? The water lubricating the locks on these shackle shackles these attachments Ooh, okay spirit <clears throat> let's see oh and look at this big drop of water i don't know if you can see it i don't know i think i just spilled off but it spilled right on her face right there i don't know if you can see it something about your identity as well how you perceive yourself or how others perceive you there's some freedom around freedom from identification with uh well i'm getting something like matrix archetypes so perhaps um stereotypes like that crone stereotype freedom from okay let's just break it down this way there's a freedom a detachment from how others perceive you, okay? There's less of a care about that and a more, uh, more willingness to step into your authenticity. I'm, I'm getting something like some of the most well-liked souls by the upper realms are those who do not fit into the middle world or, or like the 3D plane. Hmm. Okay, let's see. What is the threshold, the creative diamond with the fool? Oh my gosh, yeah, totally about creativity and, and just using all of your life experience, all of your talent, all of who you are, all of your energy to create something that reflects the feelings that you have about yourself, about others, and about life, like your true feelings. Oh, how do I say this? <laughs> I'm just, there's so much energy running through this reading, running through me. I'm hearing J and B, um, which are also the um, Yohim and Boaz, which are on the High Priestess card. There's some, which are the gates to Solomon's temple, right? There's, so there's something, that doorway again, a threshold that you're walking through. Night, crone of doorways. I feel like spirit says the answer for you or the right doorway to walk through for you is one in which you detach from... worry and fear of what others think about you and how others perceive you. OK, 
Okay, now I understand that it can be important to show up like a normal human being every day. And we all do have egos and we all do care to a certain extent what other people think. And that's okay. You can still live in your authenticity while navigating this terrain of the matrix that we live in. But this is more about not caring about your um, your creations or what you're bringing into form, not, not having... Don't look through the lens of others at your creation. Look through your own eyes at your own creation. Are, is it something that you are proud of? Is it something that speaks to you? Do your creations help you grow? Don't do it for others. Do it for you. Oh, I was also getting a message. And I feel like this has a lot to do with... Um, for those of you who are helping guide other people in any other in any way, you could be tarot readers, you could be mothers, you could be teachers, you could be nurses. I don't know. Um, hospice death doulas. I'm getting interesting. If you're a death doula, let me know. <laughs> I'd like to know more about that for sure. Um, that's massive crone energy right there. But um, one second. <laughs> There's something here about. Making sure Well, I was getting, let's say it this way. I was getting a message that there are people out there who are just blasting out things or just giving ABC advice or just going by the book kind of robotic, not thinking, and they're in the energy of taking. They want to take a lot. Maybe they want to make a lot of money, or maybe they want a lot of accolades or a lot of recognition, or perhaps they're so busy thinking about something else that they don't care how they're feeding off of someone else's energy, whatever it is, right? It's like they're taking, 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 and they're just putting out, putting out, and whoever they're putting out to is also in the taking, taking energy. So there's something for you, okay, whoever this is hitting. There's something for you that you need to be very aware of if you want to be around others who are in a receptive energy and not just a taking energy and also in a giving frequency, then you need to find that balance and make sure that you're not simply coming from a taking um, frequency. Okay, I feel like this is a little bit getting lost. So we'll leave that there because the next card here, who is the guardian is silence. Maybe that's a message too. You know, I generally like to take that as a message that when I start losing my words or tripping up on my words, it's not meant to be said, or the energy hasn't formed yet into coherent thought for me to download and communicate with you. So if you're finding yourself at a loss for words or tripping up over your words, then accept that there should be silence there. So when I do readings, I try consciously not to use my intellectual mind where I'm just kind of, you know, drawing on all my resources and just communicating things I already know. I try to tap into the energy and even if it comes out clunky or I don't articulate things right, I'm trying to work with something that isn't just my own knowledge and wisdom that I have, you know? So remember that if things are coming out and they're not sounding eloquent, it's perhaps because they're not meant to or because the energy has yet to be formed in such a way, or I'm, I'm seeing a, a stone skipping on the water. Perhaps they're meant to skip over some people. You can listen to someone and feel everything they're saying, feel their energy, feel their frequency, and still be kind of like, hmm, I'm not really totally sure how that makes sense, but I understand it nonetheless. I'm hearing that's crone energy, that's hidden wisdom being conveyed without having to rely on language, which is man-made. Ooh, <laughs> guys, <laughs> Spirit's giving me a nice little <laughs> excuse for tripping up on my words too. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, we have new moon. Yes, the 1111 portal. Wow. Okay, so November 11th. Oh, which uh, here in Canada is Remembrance Day. So something could be significant for you about poppies. But on November 11th, we do take a minute of silence at 11 o'clock to honor those who fought and died for our freedoms. So spirit has a message about that, not in a literal way, but if we look at that symbolically, perhaps it's a time for us to take a moment of silence to pay honor and, uh, and acknowledge all of our ancestors who came before us and did the karmic work so that we could have the cycle that we're currently in, so that we could have the life that we're currently in. There's something about taking a moment of silence and maybe a meditative state to show gratitude for other souls who have paved the way for your own. These are your ancestors. These are people that you don't know as well. Okay, we have a lot. We're very, very abundant. If you're watching this message, then you have a lot. Even if it's little compared to others, you have the time, you have the energy to watch this, to take this message in. So a moment of gratitude, silence. Your words have teeth and talons. They can pry open any door along your way coming with silence. Right, so there's some door that spirit is saying, don't pry that door open on November 11th. Stay silent. Not, it doesn't have to be an all-day practice, or maybe some of you do want to do that. Uh, but it could be and something happens where you need to just take a moment and not react. Or somebody might come to you for wisdom, for guidance, and it's not the time to give it. Because there's some door that doesn't want to be pried open or that shouldn't be. It leads to a different path than the one you're currently on. New moon, also on the new moon, not just November 11th, but the new moon as well, which I believe, when is that? I don't know, <laughs> I forget, but I'm also hearing the 15th on November 15th. When is the new moon? I don't have my stuff here. Whenever that is, this new moon, next new moon, whenever you come across this message. Okay, so what do you need to know? So the new moon is the guardian, by the way. What do you need to know about your teeth and talons, your words? Manifestation, see? Your words manifest your reality, just like your thoughts manifest your reality, but your words well, they're like an added frequency on top of that. Hmm. What you say comes to pass. And so many of you in the last collective reading, I was telling you about my guides and how they don't like when I say life is too short. And so many of you were on it like this. You caught that. You, you said this message that I'm giving right here, that your guides don't like that because when you speak that, when you say that, you are creating that reality that your life is potentially short. Now, I meant it like life is short and compared to your soul's journey like this life cycle but i i heed the advice and i will take it from my guides and from you guys <laughs> so thanks for that but this is exactly the point right what you say becomes a reality and this is why negative self-talk is so bad <laughs> and important to transmute and to change okay watch your words for real, for real, okay? And remember that all are one, okay? I, oh, I also got a message earlier about, um, how did, what was the exact words? Something like black magic will always fail because all are one. That wasn't exactly how it was said. I should have written it down. Something like that. 
So that was the idea. Black magic will always fail because all are one, meaning that whoever is sending out negative energy, we'll just put it that way, towards you or towards other or, or a group of people, it will always come back because the energy we send out is the energy we receive. Okay? And that's just that. Not to say it can't have an effect necessarily, but it will affect whoever is trying to put that out into the universe. Always. Okay? Okay, I'm getting a very specific message. This seems like kind of a, a side message. <laughs> some of you could have somebody um, low-key obsessed, high-key obsessed, or per I, I really don't want to say this word because it can be triggering for some, but uh, so warning, but I, I am feeling like you, some of you could have some kind of stalker, like for, for real. And I don't mean just like your ex is checking up on your social media. I mean, like somebody is really like hunting for your energy, um, in some way or another it could even be on the 5d. And what you need to know is that that energy is going to be sent back to them, not sent back to them. Sorry they're going to receive that energy that they're putting out there, okay? So there's some kind of um, spiritual consequence, cause and effect that's going to happen, okay? So there's something about you being protected and knowing that, and this, this person has something um, that they're going to have to deal with in a pretty severe way way more severe than you could even imagine and per perhaps how they could imagine. Now, that seems very particular. So if you're like, oh my God, I have a stalker, what? It's not your message, okay? This is someone who, who knows what I'm talking about, okay? So seven of pentacles here with manifestation for what do you need to know about your words? Take your time with your words. Be patient as well. Some of you are writers, I saw my pen earlier as I was talking and it says the word writer on it. <laughs> uh, maybe zig could also be, it also, also says zig, these are my favorite pens, but it also says zig with memory system. Hmm. There could be something about that, um, something about a zigzag or something about memory here, but your writing is going to progress Keep it horizontal. I don't know what that means for everyone, but maybe you're trying to build something up or this could even be some public speaking thing you're doing, something about communication. Perhaps you're trying to progress or, or go like build up. Spirit wants you to go sideways, like build out rather, build out rather than build, build up. Mm, interesting. I don't know what exactly that means for everyone, so take it or not. But there's something about having patience with your manifestation. That's what you need to know about your words. Okay. And, and this goes, yeah, this goes back to that message for people who are putting out negative energy. It might not have, the effects might not happen automatically or right away, but they will happen sooner or later. You cannot escape cause and effect. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> what do you need to know about the chaos that you're facing? We have this beautiful square here. Some chaos coming into form with judgment. Ooh. Focus that. Focus that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no, no. The card's so pretty. There, thanks. judgment and this square now i knew i'd need the book i knew i was going to pull a card that i didn't know so one second let me see in the book what they say about this square this is the supra oracle it's freaking gorgeous okay let's see the terra firma the living mystery of the earth discovered in the simple yet monumental ground below us is the primary direct experience of human consciousness 
So much is freely offered to us from this great spirit of earth, the raw material of existence, whose dark, rich soil is filled with life to come. The terra firma inheritance that is our power and our destiny. Destiny. About the chaos facing you and judgment. Oh, wow. <clears throat> this has something to do with the three fates and the, that raven I was seeing with the red thread cutting the thread. Fate is being decided here. Okay, it's coming into form. This chaos energy that we've been working with or you've been working with has, I'm seeing this uh, web here, has woven a web of thread. Oh, interesting. And spirits seeing what has been caught in this web of thread. What? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> What has formed out of the chaos will be judged. There's something to do with your spiritual awakening, most definitely. This crone energy, the crone within you, is going to pass a judgment about whether you have used the energy of chaos wisely. Have you brought something to form that is worthy of being in the web of life? Or I'm hearing, or should it be expelled into darkness? <laughs> Guys, I know this seems ominous. Okay, so think about chaos as something to honor it's starting to rain out now can you hear it maybe not right the rain the water the creative diamond there's the rain on the windows hmm guys this is so big okay so some of you are going through something that is just really difficult, really horrendous, or perhaps you already did. And in those times in our life, we can go in so many different directions. We can take that energy and just go into the shadow. We can go into a really dark place and we can propagate shadow. We can propagate darkness into the world. And that is what will be judged by your inner crone, regardless of your gender. Okay. And by spirit, did you do something wise with that moment? or not. So if you find yourself at the threshold right now, you're in a chaotic place or state or something's going on that's just making you feel totally screwed in some way, okay? Remember that this is important what you do with this energy. And what you do with this energy is what will create your future. This is a time to transmute. What do you want to take this energy and turn it into all this negative force field that you've been in or worked with. What are you going to do with it to bring it into the light? I'm hearing haters going to hate. <laughs> haters going to hate. Okay. But that doesn't mean you need to propagate the frequency of hate or even send that hate back. Don't send that hate back. Take it and say, I'm going to bring this into love. I'm going to turn this into light. I'm going to take this chaos and make something transformative out of it so I can rise from the ashes. All right. There's a lot being said here, I feel like, in the silence between things I'm saying. <laughs> so... Some things are, are here that are being unsaid. So if you feel like she could say this, she could have said that, or is this really what she means? Yes. Yes, yes. Take it. Create it. The message for yourself. Okay. So more info on the harbinger of change. Gentleness. I like this. 
so this is telling me that this change, come on camera. I'm not gonna use this camera if it takes forever to focus in like that. <laughs> spirit. <laughs> yeah, not that spirit sent me this camera, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, anyways, <laughs> this change is gonna come through in a gentle way, okay? But see how she's turning her head from this little bird? It's like, what? how can this massive transformation come through in a gentle way? Are you going to send me something so sweet, so loving as the harbinger of change? Shouldn't this come through as in like lightning and thunder and like vultures and turkeys, I'm hearing, <laughs> turkeys and what? Oh, my ear's ringing right there. Shouldn't it be something a little bit scary? And spirit is saying, the harbinger of change will come through a gentle energy. Let's see, what is this? The Empress, oh, <laughs> yes, the Empress. So don't worry about tower moments and that kind of thing, okay? This is not that, that hmm, the warning isn't like warning, you're gonna create a, a tower moment. This has a much more subtle vibe and feel. Yeah, so if you open a doorway that is not in your highest good, it's going to take a while till you figure out that you actually walked through that doorway if you're unconscious about it, okay? So there's some kind of gentle manifestation, gentle ownership, I'm hearing, gentle ownership over what is rightfully yours. So not feeling like you need to stake your claim and put your, like, you know, this is mine and I did this and I work. No, that's not the energy that spirit wants you to tap into. There's something about like, ah, oh, this is me. This is my creation. All is well, you know, it's that kind of vibe. A, a deep knowingness of your ability to nurture your creation, right? So we, we have the maiden with the fool card. We have the mother and we have the crone showing up. So nurturing, mothering your work, your creation, gently, softly, okay? Not trying to hit productivity peaks, you know, or focus on things like that, you know, those kind of like pushing yourself, pushing yourself to do this, pushing yourself to, to like lift 200 pounds, pushing yourself to eat this kind of food or pushing yourself to, to wake up at this time. There's spirit wants you right now in this time, in this energy to be gentle with yourself. Follow what it is that your body wants and needs at this time, okay? Because it's helping you nurture and mother your own energy and also the energy of your creation. Also, your words, how would the empress speak is something that maybe you want to ask yourself if you want that kind of abundance in your life the abundance that the empress represents and growth that she represents and vitality. What would she say? How would she speak? This is important to consider. Spirit saying she would speak gently. Okay, so what blocks your luminosity? What's in the shadow here? We have earth energy. Yeah, this is like the pressures of the 3D matrix. Where's my lens? I'm gonna get better at this, guys, I promise. It's like a new, anyways. There we are. Oh, interesting. See how the hands are reaching out here? Unlike the creative diamond card, it's like looking to the earthly plane for freedom. And what I mean by that is like, Focusing on, well, let's see what the tarot card is. The hermit, earth energy as well. What blocks your luminosity? 
uh, it's something about evaluating yourself against these societal standards. Comparison, comparison, comparing yourself to others, which is, you know, I talked about this before. We all do that to some degree, but there's something here about your magic that is, there's something about you and your essence where you could bring something into this world that isn't already here. Some new form. Something transcendent, I'm hearing. That transcends what's already here on earth. So you can't look to others to help you bring that in. Don't mirror others. Blocks your luminosity. Spirit also wants you to think cosmically, okay? You know, it can be so easy to get wrapped up in our own little thoughts and our own little lives and our own little issues and our own little wins and whatever else is going in our, on in our life. We can have a monologue all day about ourselves, <laughs> you know? I've been there for sure. But Spirit wants you to start thinking about, I'm hearing the birds, the deer, uh, the plants, the planets, the cosmos, the world, you know, and not necessarily how that relates to you or what it can do for you, but just as it is, the energy of it all. Step into a larger consciousness, a, a larger conscious awareness of what life really is. I don't know exactly why spirit wants you to do this, but I'm guessing that by doing so, well, let's confirm, by doing so, there's some kind of air. There's some new thoughts you can form. There's some new thoughts you can form. Sageness. And potential, the potential to become a sage, to become wise, crone energy, to open the right doorways is in the frequency of our thoughts, which must also include the larger perspective and not just our interpersonal lives. Okay, so let's see what the outcome is everydayness and the ace of cups <laughs> bring creativity into your everyday in whatever way you can big or small find the joy every day and i know this sound sounds a little cliche i get it but this is truly how we shift this is how we heal this is how we develop our psychic abilities this is how we ascend this is how we connect with our soulmates this is like this is the key to find the magic in the everyday, to find the joy in the everyday, to bring a small little creation into the other everyday. Even if it's the creation of a new memory, even if it's the creation of a new thought, even if it's the creation of a new sentence, whatever it is, bring something in every day that fills your cup. And that fills the cup of others as well. Share those creations in whatever way you can. Some of you are cooks. You need to cook some more. <laughs> okay, guys. That's the message I have. I know this was a different kind of vibe, a different feeling, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I love you so much, and I'll see you next time.